Hello graphic design. So in this tutorial I'm going to talk to you more about the four uh, laws of gestalt that you're going to put into compositions to visually explain these principles. I'm going to further explain them and walk you through how to do some of them. Hopefully it'll help you understand a little bit better. I'm going to go over proximity, similarity, continuance, and closure. Um, and we're going to start with proximity here. So one way to think about proximity is basically you're grouping things in the families. You're uh, showing that they belong together. And the difference between this and alignment, alignment puts things into organization and uh, for your design with your information and all that. And just so it looks a little bit more professional. Proximity is just a way to organize things so that they get grouped together so that they belong together. So let's go over to um, Google Draw and I'll walk you through a proximity um, graphic design visual solution. All right, so now we're in Google Draw. You're going to have two different solutions just like that shown here. You'll have your two white squares in the background to show me where your composition begins and ends just like uh, last week's assignment, only you're doing two for each word instead of three. This one should be relatively easy to put together, um, and you are allowed to use circles and squares. You can combine them. Um, I just chose not to for these two. And be creative with it. Don't just put a few circles somewhere and then throw them in there and say they belong. Make an interesting shape with them, um, because these ones right here are all grouped together, it is visually telling the viewer that these guys belong together and then these guys belong up here. Also, within these little ones, it looks like your eye is putting these together like they belong together. So you can arrange this any way you want. You can be as creative with it as you want. You can combine the circles with the squares. It is up to you. So throughout this, I'm going to show you different techniques you can use for all of your uh, compositions. With this one, I wanted to take the opportunity to show you a neat little trick. So first, what I'm going to do is make a really big circle. And I'm going to use this as my guideline to place a bunch of little circles in there to make it look like. And remember, you hold your shift key down to get a perfect circle. Um, but I'm going to make it look like a bunch of little circles are together making the bigger circle. So just bear with me and watch this happen. First, I want to give this no fill so that um, I can see through it because this is just going to be my guideline and I'm going to delete it later. Uh, now I'm going to make a bunch of little black circles. You can use black or white. It totally depends on how you want to design this. So it might also help you to do some... Uh, Google searches on these words and look up others solutions to these or get a good visual bank going on in your head. Um, that'll give you some other ideas on how you can arrange the circles and the squares in a creative way. Alright, so I've jumped ahead a little bit here and as you can see I filled in the bigger circle with a lot of other little circles. You want to make sure that these all fit right on the edge there. Then you can grab the bigger one around there and delete it and see how it looks. I don't think it's tight enough and doesn't fit in that circle enough. So you can do things like bring some of them closer to the edge until you get a nice um, circle shape with the littler circles. All right, so using this um, main circle as a guide, we have created using the idea of proximity another larger shape with a bunch of smaller shapes. So just with proximity, remember you're just grouping these things together to make it look like these belong in their own little space, like they all belong together, even though they technically don't because they're all their own individual little circle. But because you've grouped them all together, you've created the idea of proximity.
So with similarity, there are lots and lots of different ways you can choose to tackle this one. Um, the one on the left here, I've arranged the circles so it looks like they have uh, spindly arms coming out kind of like an octopus. Then use squares and arrange them in the same way so it looks like a similar kind of flow as to the circles. Um, over here on the right, they're grouped into a pattern so that they're similar to each other. What you're doing with this is drawing attention to those certain areas by making them go along with each other. So that would be like, let's say for your website, you want to draw attention to certain buttons that people need to push. You would make them similar to each other. So it's similar in proximity because you're making it look like those groups belong together. You're making these things look like they belong together but giving them a similar um, flow of the way the shapes are going, like in the left, or giving them a similar spacing or even color. Um, you could even add white in here, certain white squares that looks like they go along with them. There's lots of different things you can do. All right, so for this example, I'm gonna walk you through real quick. I've made a lot of rows of black squares. And now what I'm going to do is add white circles um, and kind of randomly place them around, but you'll see how they start to look similar to each other um, and like they belong there. So I've made my circle, held the shift key down, um, and it's blue, but we want it to be white, correct? Because you can only use white or black. And there we go. Now, instead of having to redraw it, I can just do a control C and a control B. Place it anywhere else I want. This is similar to the example that's in the reading handout that you got. Um, so it's the same concept as that one. This is a possible solution to this. So it's got the same concept as proximity in that the white ones look like they're grouped together like they belong together in the family, even though they're not grouped together because they're just randomly placed all around here. But, but because there's similarity in this pattern going on, the white circles are assumed to all belong together and the black squares are assumed to all belong together. Um, so again, this is one of the little bit more easier ones. So I'm kind of looking for a little bit more complexity, not just a few things in this composition. Uh, try to fill it up like I did here or arrange them in different ways or really get creative combining the circles and the squares. Don't be afraid to hop over to Google and do some more research on this, looking at other people's solutions. So the next one I'm going to talk about is continu continuity. Sometimes it's called continuance. Um, this is basically just following the theory that your eye will always follow a line, um, regardless of whether or not an actual line is drawn there. And we're doing it with shapes. Um, I've used only circles in mine you can combine the circles and the squares. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build this one on the right. All right, so as you're doing yours, obviously you're going to follow lines with this. Um, you can do any lines, any pattern you want, but you could sit here, make all these circles, and then try to visually line it up like it's actually following a line. But what I'm going to show you to do is how to trace the line with the shapes. So first we need to draw the line that's making, or the lines that's making the, the spiral here with the circles. You can do squares too if you want or alternate between them. That's, that's up to you. So first thing I need to do is get the correct line tool. That's up here. Um, depending on what line you're trying to follow, it depends on which tool you're going to use. Obviously I'm doing a curvy thing. So I'm going to grab the curve tool. I showed you in the last one how to use, or I think it was the first one, doing the cityscape. Um, the polyline, we're going to use the curve line in here. This one's a little bit tricky, but it's similar to Illustrator. You click once, and you get a straight line first, but you have to click hold. Oops. Um, 
and then it will curve for you. And if you hold your shift key down, it'll snap it in however you want it. So this just depends on how you want your curve. You're gonna have to play with this first just to get more comfortable with it. So let's say I want my curve to do this and I'm gonna put it in a spiral. When you're done with your line and you like it, you double click and it finishes it. And you grab your arrow tool and then you can move it around and resize it. Now to get this going around perfectly, you can play around with the align options. But another way to do it is to just grab one more circle up here and build it around that circle so that it's um, nice and even. Oh yeah, one other way to make a perfect circle, instead of drawing it holding your shift key down, you get your circle tool and you click once you get your circle. All right, I'm going to place that there and I'm going to make sure the tip of that line lines up with it. Grab that one again by selecting it, do a copy paste, and then you just drag it close to where it's going to go, rotate it, just like you did with your squares in the other one, and just keep doing that until you get it nice and even around that circle. All right, so I got my lines going around the circle. Now I'm going to fill it with um, the circles of my pattern here going from big to small. Um, I have a little extra nubby here on the end of my line because I messed it up, but that's okay because we're going to delete these when we're done. Um, making sure these are nice and tight to that circle there is going to help. Um, and as you can see, I'm struggling. I still have it kind of going into that circle. It, when you're doing that and stuff isn't moving right for you, I want you to know that as you zoom in, you can get tighter with your movements and get more clean with it. So make sure you're spending time on that and getting stuff accurate so that your design works when you're done. The closer you go in, the shorter amount these are going to move so you can get more accurate with it. So you're going to have to get used to zooming in and out. This one doesn't quite touch, so I'm going to move it in a little bit. Um, you can also nudge with your arrow tool, but it goes pretty far. You may have to click and drag stuff. Now I'm going to start making my circles that are going to follow these lines. Yes, it's falling out of my composition here, but I can, when I'm done, go back, resize it, or just move this guy so it all fits in. So I have this started, but I didn't want to get too far ahead because I wanted to show you how you can get these aligned with each other without using the align tool. So you just do a copy paste on it. And then as you move it around, you'll see red lines that will guide you so you can get them snapped into place. All right, the first leg's done. Now all I need to do is copy and paste these and rotate them and move them around this. It will help you to use the grouping tool. So that's right click, group, so that they're all together. Do a control C, control V, and then rotate it and get it to match up with that other line. And see, I accidentally let go of it, but because I grouped it, I can just click it again real easy. And I'm just gonna keep working this around um, this design. All right, so I've got it pretty much finished. And just to show you that again real quick, I've had them grouped as in the one object, so then I can rotate it and do whatever it is I need to do to it to get it to line up. Now I can delete the stuff I was tracing, the lines and that circle, and resize it so it fits within that composition. All right, closure will be in the next video, but I just wanted to show you something really quick here. I reversed it, so I'm using white circles. This is perfectly acceptable. Yes, you may copy a spiral of your own design, there you go, that's continuity. You're basically following lines with your shapes. And the way you get to that is by tracing other lines that you've made. Just wanna show you really quick here too, one unacceptable solution to that is I went up here and grabbed the straight line tool, making a straight line and putting shapes across it. Be creative with it, make different lines and try to have fun. All right, closures in the next video.